I'm going to start with one of your winners, Rick. Let's start at the top. A young man we spoke with yesterday out of Iowa, never started a football game in Iowa, Lucas Van Ness. We knew he was going to test well. Did you have any idea that Lucas Van Ness at 6'5", 272, would run a 4'5", No, when you watched him on tape, uh, you saw him play outside, you saw him play inside, both the flexibility that he can go up and down the defensive line for you. Uh, you saw some of the athletic traits. Where he was lacking was the technique. And that stuff, when you're watching the tape and you're talking with the coaches pre-combine, is, hey, we can work with that, but let's see what he does when he gets to the combine. And this kid was impressive when we talked to him, interviewed him earlier before all this. He goes out and blows out combine numbers that are – very unique, especially with the arm length as well. And now coaches and scouts and GMs are going to go back, and I bet you he's going to start shooting up some draft boards. If there was any question about him not going in the first round, I think with the numbers that he put up today and how hard he plays and a coach telling the general manager, hey, I could fix what we see on tape because it's all technical things, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes in the first round now. 34-inch arms, and in terms of fixing things on tape, he told us the reason he didn't start is because at Iowa, the tradition is if you're older and you're a veteran, you play more snaps, and that was the case with, with Lucas Van Ness. He seemed to understand the situation. He also seemed to understand that his future is probably going to be pretty bright in the NFL. and that's Very why, bright now. <laughs> very bright now. And let's be clear here. You know as much as you know about Lucas Van Ness – Going into the day, the tape hasn't changed, but you are impressed by the numbers. I am impressed by the numbers because you can't teach what he did out of that uh, combine today. And you can't put up numbers with that size, with that speed, with that arm length, and ignore that. And that's why you go back, and I understand what you're talking about. Technically, with his hands as a pass rusher, can he get his pad level a little lower at times? But he plays hard. That's something you can't teach. That right. has to be in a player's heart. So if you got a guy that plays hard, hard that is limited in play time per se compared to everybody else so as you said earlier there's a lot of tread left on that tires his arrow is going definitely up another young man whose arrow is going up and played a lot of football last year for the university of tennessee is byron young had a great season had a great senior bowl again he came in and these guys are running times like they're rashad bateman at wide receiver 6'2 uh 250 but he ran a 443 and it just confirmed the athleticism the numbers confirmed what we saw on tape right yeah no and he really jumped out down at the senior bowl i was not as enthusiastic about him as you were yeah when you watched the tape this fall he was a good player uh but he didn't stick out but these are the type of guys that Okay, what do they do after their season? Are they trending up or are they trending down? And this kid is definitely trending up because he played great in the senior bowl. You saw his motor. You saw his energy. You saw the pass rush ability coming off the edge. He is a little undersized, but then he goes out there and puts up numbers like this. He continues to trend up. I don't think he's going to be – he's not a first-round pick in my no. opinion, but someone's going to move him up the board. I wouldn't be surprised to see his name come off on Friday. I feel like a day two – range feels right for Byron Young and another young man and you know you're talking about effort with Lucas Van Ness we talked about effort with Byron Young this young man has all the talent in the world Florida defensive tackle Javon Dexter again insane numbers that's why he's one of your winners 6'6 310 uh his arms were 32 and a quarter inch and by Rick Spielman and NFL standards that's relatively short for a defensive tackle especially a 6'6 defensive tackle he ran a 4 four eight eight. now I don't know if the 40 times it's not a 5 three so I don't know if the 4 eight, eight, eight gets your attention as much as the arm length and the athleticism in general the athleticism and that 40 time at that size will grab your attention now when you watch him on tape at times you will see him pursuit outside He's like, this is a big man that can run. But other times, it seems like he doesn't play as hard. So the biggest question I would have with him during the interview process, and I would show him plays on tape. This is what we see you do. That And this play shows that you run a 4 or 4-8. Four, You're an incredible athlete for your size. And then I'd throw on another play. Why aren't you running to the ball and playing hard all the time? But there's a lot of untapped potential here. Teams have to decide whether he's an underachiever, and I've missed on some guys that were underachievers, or can that coach get to him to make sure that he's playing hard every snap and what it takes to play in the NFL. Another young man that played extremely hard on tape at Northwestern, Tommy Adabare. Loved him, loved him. Uh, first tape I watched on him was against Nebraska out at Ireland. And That's right, first game of the season. First game of the season. I said, this kid's got a chance to be a pretty good player. I don't know if he's an edge rusher, but 
I thought that maybe he can be a good inside pass rusher. We saw him down at the Senior Bowl. They slid him inside. I think he's got an excellent chance of being third down nickel inside pass rusher. And then these numbers just confirmed what type of athlete he actually is. Four four nine, and I, I said to you, he's only six two. He's four inches shorter than Javon Dexter, but he has longer arms, almost thirty four inch arms. And I asked you specifically just before the show, do you want six two and thirty four inch arms, or do you want six six and thirty two and a quarter inch arms? And you said if you put to- Tommy Adabare in Javon Dex- Dexter's body, then it, the problem solved. Then you're talking about a top ten pick. That's right, and Adabare as the saying goes, made himself a lot of money, it feels like, not only today, but in the Senior Bowl and the way he played there. Yeah, and if you thought that he was potentially uh, going to be a day three guy, maybe an early fourth round pick, the performance he had at the Senior Bowl, the performance he had today out on that field, he could slip into Friday, and he's another guy that is trending in the right direction. I feel like he's a Friday guy. I I agree with you. I love the kid. I love the way he plays. Uh, He's an outstanding character guy, smart, intelligent, everything you want in a player. Everybody's just a little nervous about the size, especially as an edge rusher at 6'2". But what he showed when he went down at the Senior Bowl, that I can be an inside pass rusher in nickel situations on the field, this kid made some money today. Adebari was one of my winners as well. Another winner, a guy we didn't see for much of the season, at least second half of the season because of a pectoral injury, didn't play in the national title game, but was very visible on the sidelines cheering his teammates on. And this young man, Nolan Smith, ran a 4.39 officially today. He's an edge rusher, slightly undersized. Uh, he's less than 245. I don't have the, the official number in front of me. Um, but the thing is this. He was angry, Rick, that he only ran a 4.39. And he said he wasn't running as fast as perhaps he could have. I'm not saying that he was, he was, he was loafing, but he, he thought he had another gear he could have hit. And he was visibly frustrated and talked about it uh, on the telecast. Great football player. You can see him run here. And obviously – This feels like it catapults him. When you watch some of these guys run, and we just watched him run there, it doesn't look like a 4-3 line, but he's such a smooth athlete. You see him stride down the field. You see how efficient his start is in a 40-yard dash. He's not going back and forth as he's running. He's running in a straight line. He'll hey, I just ran a 4-3-9. Damn, I'm going to go in the first (laughs) round. That's right. And that's what I was going to ask you, the old uh, Spielman dollar bet here. Any chance you want to take the dollar that he falls outside the top 31? No. The only thing that I was disappointed a little bit, I would have liked to see him work out. I know he ran the 40, ran a great time. I don't believe he did the drills. I didn't see him out there. I don't want to say if I miss it, I apologize. But I didn't see him doing any drills. I'm sure he'll do it down at the Georgia Pro Day. But when you watched him on tape, especially earlier in the season, I thought he was more talented, played harder, although uh, Ojolari did play hard down there. Yeah. But he was more talented, more athletic, and quicker twitch than uh, Ojolari was when he came out. So another young man who in the fall got some first-round buzz, and the the course of the season, not that it became clear, but there's some things he needed to work on in terms of better awareness at the position. He had moved from tight end. I'm talking about Isaiah Foskey, the edge rusher from Notre Dame. Enormous, big hands, physically everything you want. And then he comes down here, and he busts out a 4 five, eight. Right. Now, I don't think this necessarily means he's a top 31 pick at this point. He feels like a day two pick all day long because of the intangibles. What are you thinking about Isaiah Foskey? Yeah, he had a good day today, and he has unique size, unique arm length. He ran fast. The only issue I had with him is I don't see the athletic numbers that he ran here today. They don't uh, translate to when you're watching the tape, or you don't see those same type of numbers with the way he plays. Sometimes he plays by the numbers, which I mean he doesn't always look – natural or instinctive at what he does a defensive line coach is definitely going to fall in love with him because of these measurables they're going to say hey let me work with this kid because i think he has a chance you just got to make sure that he's an instinctive football player so i'm going to uh i'm going to go off script here our producer debo just just let me know that why does debo just talk to you and not me he's afraid of you uh <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news, because we're doing this as the as some of the, the players are still running their times. One of your favorite people on planet Earth, Will Anderson, ran an unofficial four six nine. What does that say to you? Well, it's unofficial, so but it's going to be in that neighborhood. Yeah, but you, you, it's probably a little disappointing. You think so? Yeah, because you'd want him to run in the four fives. That would solidify him maybe as a number one overall pick. But that's not slow. That's more than fast enough to be one of the top players picked in this draft especially maybe the top defensive player picked in this draft right now but wait a second four six nine ten years ago you're doing cartwheels for that yeah that was 10 years ago okay okay so but the way these guys are running now and the way they get trained 
uh, you're expecting fast times. And, you know, to go back and not to open up a uh, scab, but some of your <laughs> bold predictions are going to get blown away. They're very, very, very conservative bold predictions. 